Hi, I'm Nathan with SobeySource.com. Um, today I'm going to cover a little bit about the uh, UM 2.8 TIFF with Touch. Um, so let's get into that a little bit then, shall we? Um, um, first things first, I want to explain the Touch itself. You have it's a 2.8 um, TIFF, obviously. Um, this one here is from Adafruit. This, of course, is the breakout board. They also make a shield. Um, there are a couple other companies making the same thing. Um, I don't think theirs is using the same driver for the LCD. This one is an ILI... I don't have the information up currently. Uh, 3228, we'll say. Sounds good. Um, there's a couple other people making this same basic screen. The drivers for those are a little bit different. The driver chip for the LCD, um, but I think the code is going to be pretty much the same. I do know that for the touch screen, the code is exactly the same because everyone's using <coughs> um, Lady Ada's uh, um, libraries for the touch screen, which is mostly what I'm going to be covering here. I'm not going to be covering a whole lot of what how to put um, pictures on the display so much as I'm going to be covering a little bit more about how to get your touch area to line up with your pictures. So um, the first thing to understand about the screen is that you have to understand that the LCD and the touch screen are two separate entities. Um, the LCD um, like only does one task, which is display graphics on um, pixel by pixel. That's all that it does. It doesn't know how to talk with the touch screen and it doesn't know what the touch screen is sensing. Okay, so on the other half of that coin is the touch screen itself. It only knows how to interpret touches and where that is in X, Y. Okay, so to get your touch areas to line up with your buttons, um, it's just a matter of a little bit of coding. And then, so we'll just get right into it. So first, let me go ahead and bring up the Arduino here. This is the code that I currently have installed. It, it's pretty basic. Um, these are all your pins. On the colors you can call on for the LCD. Uh, first thing to note is that um, this code here, which I will be handing out as well, um, make sure your serial is enabled. Okay, um, I have set the rotation three, which puts it in landscape mode, as you see, and puts your row of pins on the right. If you have the shield, that means that your USB on your R, on your um, Uno or Mega is going to be on the right. Um, some basic stuff here to start off with. You can see here that I've actually put two buttons on the screen. Um, I've just filled them with black and added button one inside. And I've made two buttons as the second button. Um, your um, minimum maximum pressure and here's your loop. Some basic stuff here. These map out the uh, points on the touch screen so that, they're be that way they're, they're between 0 and 240 and 0 and 320 versus being 1024 or 1023 in this case. So this is your first if statement. Uh, this is just for the touch screen. Well, and what this actually does is it looks for any pressure. So if if there's any pressure between min pressure and max pressure, which is what we set up up here, then carry on. So what I've done here is this is um, just sending it back via the serial monitor where you touch the screen so that um, when you touch the screen you can see exactly where that is X and Y for your touch area. So let me just show you how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the serial monitor. Okay, so let's go to the screen. And basically, since I've already got my buttons on here, uh, that really makes my webcam lag. Um, I'm trying to do this slow. By pressing one of the corners, you'll see that on the serial monitor, we now have a Y and an X value and a pressure value. So this is really all there is to figuring out where on the screen um, you need to put your coordinates for the touch area. Um, then back to the screen, I will uh, press on the uh, bottom corner of the same box, which you'll see on the serial monitor, and um, gives us the other one. So we know that it needs to be between Y21 and Y120, and between X165 and X93. And the pressure doesn't really matter unless you're going for pressure sensitivity, which 
in my case I'm not I just want to detect any press in those areas for the buttons to function so let's just go ahead and set up a um, an action for the first button to do something so let's go ahead and close this so we're going to come down here and we're just going to go ahead and turn the serial off and we'll go ahead and shut the serial off up here which because I'm recording will actually help my webcam speed okay so if sensor is pressed then it continue well let's tell it where to look for specific pressure at copy my code in drop it in right here okay so all I've really done if there's pressure where's the pressure so if and then put another if inside of that if we're going to tell it if PY is greater than 28 and PY is less than 128 and if pixel X is greater than 88 and pixel X is less than 166 then carry out in this case I've just told it to draw the words button 1 pressed red 3 the first one is just your X and Y coordinates for the text string which I've labeled everything I'm um, delay for a second so that it stays on there for a second then what I've gone ahead and done here is, um, and this is kind of for the less uh, suave people, just so you understand how it wipes the words off. Um, I've actually had it fill a rectangle to clear message, and in this case, I've actually just called in a fill rectangle and made it green, which is going to show you how it wipes the words off the screen, because it doesn't actually wipe the words off the screen, and what it does is it just colors over it because the LCD doesn't really have an erase function, you just keep coloring on top of it. So, um, to actually erase the words, uh, I'm then going to use a fill rectangle, but you're going to make it the same color as the background. So, it essentially, it just colors back over the words with the same color as the background. So, let's just go ahead and upload that now. Okay, so now when I press this button, this is still going to be laggy. Um, let's turn off this serial monitor. Okay. When I press this button, as soon as my thing catches up, it's going to make the words button one pressed. Then you're going to see a green rectangle which is going to overwrite the words and then it's going to disappear. But when it disappears, it's actually doing the black rectangle. And I know it's kind of laggy in the uh, video, but I'll do it twice here, see if you can get a good. So I, I kind of hope you can make that out in the video. It's just writing the words, and then you see a green rectangle, and then it disappears. Okay, so for the second button, I have a kind of a different way that I like to um, delete the words. And uh, let's go ahead and bring in my second set of code here. So down here, below the uh, in quote for this if, we're going to install a s another if. Now using the same means with the serial monitor to figure out where the box locations are, um, I've gone ahead and figured out where these are. Now what I've done here is I've done the same thing with the first part, which is just, you know, button 2 pressed, red, and size 3. And then a delay, so we're still on there for a second, because they're in milliseconds, so 1,000 milliseconds is one second. But instead of using the rectangle, what I've actually done is I've actually had it write the string again, except this time I've used black, which is the same color as the background, and it makes it appear that the words have actually disappeared. But when I, what in actuality, what I've done is just wrote the words again, because they're going to be in the exact same place as the first ones, but I've recolored them to black, which is the same color as the background. In other words, I've made them disappear or cleared the message. So let's go ahead and upload this. So you can see this happen in action. Okay, now that that's up. If we press the second button now, press on the button now the words pop up and they disappear though I'm, I'm not, I don't think you can make it out with the uh, 
lag. Press it again. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're making it out, but basically the words are just popping up and then they're disappearing. Um, but in the code, you can see how that's happening. So I kind of hope that helps explain a little bit about how to set up your touch screen to match up with your graphics on the LCD. Um, one more thing to note, this is kind of important, um, is the way the screen is set up with the default code. And this is kind of easily changed, but the way the default code is set up, the, L the LCD pixel starting up the left-hand corner. So this is X and Y zero, and then you know your X increases this way and your Y increases this way. Um, your touch screen, though, is on the bottom left, so it's starting from pixel zero here. So X zero, Y zero, and the Y goes out this way, and the X goes up this way um, exponentially. So I kind of hope that helps you a little bit. Um, on my website, I think I'm going to include this and a little bit of a write-up to go with this video. But uh, for now, I hope this helps you, and if you have any further questions, just don't hesitate to ask. All right, so um, this is Nathan with Sobe Source, and I hope you enjoy everything I've showed you. Have a good day.